Hi, my name is Amy Thomas Davis. I'm here recording in our home in Oregon. I want to share with you some things that I've been really praying with the Lord about and ask questions I've been asking God and really a revelation I feel I'm getting from the Lord about what what day we're in right now, what we can expect to see in these coming days. Um, I did. I had an experience some time back where a messenger of courage came and I was given a dream. I shared on it in a previous blog. If you want to see all the details of that dream and experience and revelation, you can watch it in that blog. There was, I was given the number 414 in a couple verses. In the last blog, I didn't really share enough on the second Timothy 414. That was one of the verses that was given. I just sort of touched on it because I needed to chew on it. I needed to pray about it. I needed to see what God was saying beyond just this verse. And so I started to really dive in with the Lord into this and see what he is saying. Here's what the scripture says. Alexander the coppersmith did me much harm. The Lord will repay him according to his deeds. Be on guard against him yourself, for he vigorously opposed our teaching. I'm going to come back to that in a moment, but I want to share a journal entry that I got in the process, a word from the Lord that I wrote in a journal entry. I also posted it on Facebook if you wanted to see the whole thing. This journal entry is a word from the Lord about the time, what we can expect to see in these days regarding recompense and redeeming time. Let me read it. Keeping your eyes open and your hearts awake, he will manifest his anger for compassion's sake. Keep your eyes open for the compassions of God will be manifest on the earth. Great anger raging forth like a tumult of water expressed for compassion's sake. Woe to him who builds a city on innocent blood. Let the remnant find refuge while indignation runs its course, for he will deal with their dealings. Who can stand before his indignation? Who can endure the burning of his anger? His wrath is poured out like fire, and the rocks are broken up by him. The Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble, and he knows those who take refuge in him. But with an overflowing flood, he will make a complete end of its sight and will pursue his enemies into darkness. Whatever you devise against the Lord, he will make a complete end of it. Distress will not rise up twice. That's Nahum chapter 1. For the remnant will stand in reverential fear of him, and from them he will not turn away. I saw the division in the land and the battlefields across the earth. I saw definite locations where battles occur as well. I saw battles faintly drawn. These battles could still be erased from existence. Humility erases them from existence. I saw battles lost and battles won. Humble leaders win battles. There's a company of the reverent that will rise for freedom's sake, a company whose savior is not of this realm. It is soon that we will see a manifestation of perfect recompense, his justice for all to see. For what will this lead to but the ministry of reconciliation? Paul said that knowing the fear of the Lord, we persuade men to reconcile to the Father. We have a lot of children that visit our house all day long, so we've had two doorbell rings and a child knock. But I'm going to keep on going with this blog. So let me go back to the very beginning where I'm going to read those first couple of lines. Because this message is about recompense and this message is about redeeming time, I really want to make it so clear um, both these sides that I've been seeing of recompense. So it says here in the beginning of what I call my journal entry, which I feel was a word from the Lord, keep your eyes open and your hearts awake. He will manifest his anger for compassion's sake. So this recompense, this, um, you know, vengeance, this anger that we're going to actually see it's for the sake of compassion. See, he is compassion through and through. It's who he is. He is perfect love. He is this good and amazing and beautiful and lovely and compassionate God. He can't help but be compassionate. It's who he is. And when this recompense comes on wickedness, you see, it's because of the wickedness, but it's for the sake of compassion because he has great compassion for us. 
He is our protector. He is our cover. He is the one that um, is a shield for us. He has to protect us. It's who he is. And so all the things that we're going to see take place against wickedness are for the sake of compassion. I want to make that very clear because I've felt that great compassion for the last, this last several days. I, I was very weepy, very weepy and wondering why am I so weepy? Because it wasn't my own. And I felt the heart of God. You know, what recompense coming for the sake of compassion, but there's still judgment that will come on, it will come on people. You know, in the scripture, um, there were many times where that took place. Nebuchadnezzar is an example of that. Sapphira and Ananias, that's an example of um, the Lord's judgment on a people. And I believe that Alexander the coppersmith, this was also an example of this recompense that Paul was saying would come. I'm going to read it again. It says in 2 Timothy 4.14, Alexander the coppersmith did me much harm. The Lord will repay him according to his deeds. Be on guard against him yourself, for he vigorously opposed our teaching. And then it goes on. Now in 1 Timothy, Paul talks again about and Alexander. We can't prove that they're the same one, but I'm pretty sure that they are. And this is what he says. He's talking to Timothy and he says, this command I entrust to you, Timothy, my son, in accordance with the prophecies previously made concerning you, that by them you fight the good fight, keeping faith and a good conscience, which some have rejected and suffered shipwreck in regard to their faith. Among these, One of them is Alexander, whom I have handed over to Satan so that they, so that he will be taught not to blaspheme. I read those and I can just imagine the really turmoil that Paul had been in, what this Alexander had really put him through. And there was a point where God was just going to say no more. You don't get to do that anymore because the Lord is a protector for Paul and he's a protector for us. You know, he's a, he's a compassionate God. That's just who he is. But when, when things have gone too far, the Lord will say no more. There's a scripture in Proverbs 29 that some people might not know, but I have, you know, read that scripture several times over the years. It says this, one who is often rebuked but remains stiff-necked will be broken beyond repair or beyond remedy. We're talking about a person. I know that we don't war with flesh and blood. We war against the spirits and the darkness. But the Lord deals with people too. The Lord deals with the people. And that's very clear here. You see, Paul is saying the Lord's going to deal with him according to his deeds. And the Lord will deal with people in this time. We're going to see it. But we're also going to see this great compassion it's all for the sake of compassion let me read proverbs 29 1 again one who is often rebuked but remains stiff-necked will be broken beyond repair or beyond remedy so with this recompense coming this judgment this great justice of the lord i want to be on the right side of recompense humility will put me there submitting my will to the will of the father will put me there i mentioned how it says in first timothy when paul's talking about this Alexander it says that he handed him over, handed him over to Satan so that so that he would be taught not to blaspheme I'm not going to get into this topic of blasphemy here but I am going to share on it in a future blog and I am also going to share on the ministry of reconciliation which I also mentioned in this journal entry I'm going to share on that in blogs in the next few weeks but today I'm going to stay focused on recompense and the redeeming of time and I want to get to that so in the scripture, 1 Timothy, he says, I've handed him over to learn not to blaspheme. Now I've been doing these blogs, several blogs on awe and reverence and how we as a people, as the remnant of the Lord's people need to be, you know, revering him. We need to be, look at him as reverent. We, this is what we have to do in this day. One of, the word, one of the definitions for this word blasphemy is to speak evil impiously. That word impious means without reverence. 
Now, I'm not going to get all into this, but I believe that it's a huge part to what the Lord is going to be judging. We're going to see in this day who reveres him and who does not. It's going to be very evident. We're going to begin to recognize where reverence and awe are, and where awe and reverence are is where you're going to see the Spirit of the Lord moving through a people. What a beautiful thing. I'm going to share a little bit on recompense. I have a feeling this is probably getting a little long. So I'm going to move on down here to a few things that I saw in regards to this justice. Okay. Now let me just take a minute. There's a scripture in Deuteronomy. Let me find it. Ah, Here it is. It says this in Deuteronomy 32. The Lord says, Is it not laid up in store with me, sealed up in my treasuries? Vengeance is mine, retribution. For the Lord will vindicate his people and will have compassion on his servants. Let me try that again. Is it not laid up in store with me, sealed up in my treasuries? Vengeance is mine, retribution. For the Lord will vindicate his people and will have compassion on his servants. It's all for the sake of compassion. That's what all of this is. Now, what will we see? I want to talk for a minute about what we're going to see with this recompense. I believe the Lord is going to deal with those like Alexander the coppersmith. There are those that have remained stiff-necked. They have, and there is a where they could be broken beyond repair, and it breaks my heart. You know, the weepiness that I've had this last several days because I can feel that. You know, how many times can you plead with someone uh, to to change? You know, a woman called me with a dream recently that she had. And in her dream, she was pleading with people to change. Just change. Why are you doing this? And they weren't changing. And I felt like it was such a confirmation for this word, this message that I've been getting. There are people that simply aren't changing but I want to be the one that reveres him and you want to be the one that reveres him you want to be the one that stands in awe of him that doesn't blaspheme there where there is true reverence for the Lord and those that do that when this recompense is poured out this justice comes there's a few things that we're going to see I'm going to give the list of them and then I'll explain them the first thing we're going to begin to see and we're already seeing it is the redeeming of time I'm excited because in a minute I'm going to share a dream that I had about the redeeming of time as it applies here. And it was a very powerful dream and it shook me to the core. It is changing the way I view many things. So I'm excited to share that in just a moment. Another thing that we can expect to see with this recompense is that we will dream again. Psalm 126 says, When the Lord restores the fortunes of Zion, we were like those who dream." We can expect to dream again. Another thing that we can expect to see is land, literal land, not just the restoration of land or the rebuilding of ruined cities, but as I was writing down this message, even today I started to get a download from the Lord. Land, land, land. I'm going to give the people land as part of it. See, the Lord's all, He's dealing with these things in the natural and in the spirit realm. We're going to see things here on earth manifest before us. We're going to see these things repaid to us. And it's going to happen in a mighty way, even in the way we're going to begin to get things like land, you know, financial blessing. We've been praying for um, all the provision that's, that we need. And I feel like there's land coming. I really felt that clearly. The Lord said, land, 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 I'm going to give them land. I'm going to give the people land. And I wrote it down here in my notes. It's not just restoring the land, but it's actually a gift. Like, land, like oh my gosh, now I have land. What am I going to do with this? And the Lord said, it will be for the purpose of bringing glory to my name. It will be to serve the kingdom of God well. That's what all of these things will be about. Another thing we're going to see with recompense is healing. I'm going to quickly go through a couple of the scriptures. Isaiah 61, 7. Instead of your shame, you'll receive a double portion. Instead of disgrace, you'll rejoice in your inheritance. And so you will inherit a double portion in your land. And everlasting joy will be yours. We can expect to see healing and joy. Another thing that came very clearly is what comes from this recompense. What comes from this restoration. What comes from this is going to be that we will be strong 
firm and steadfast. Mentioned in 1 Peter 5, strong, firm, and steadfast. That's what we're going to get out of this. And we're going to be different than we were before. It's not going to be weak and broken down and feeble knees. No, we're standing up now. We're strong. We're going to be firm. We're going to be steadfast. We've experienced the recompense of the Lord. One other thing, two other things, we're going to begin to see a full reward. This thing, compassion, this topic I've been talking about throughout this blog, we're not only going to, the Lord's not pouring out this just, just because of compassion alone, but it's for to impart, to, just not from his compassion, but to impart to us his compassion. I really totally butchered that. Let me try that again. It's for the purpose of us having his compassion. So we're going to get an impartation of this compassion. An impartation of, the, he's, I said in the beginning of that journal entry that his recompense, the judgment of the Lord coming on people is for the sake of compassion. And there are those that are humbled at his feet that can receive the recompense can receive the full reward and it is compassion and we're going to that's where we're going to see healings and miracles take place Jesus was moved by compassion and he healed the people we're going to be filled with that same compassion from God as a result to this recompense being poured out on the earth on a people so there's that list and there are many more things that will come and I might do mention it in you know future blogs but I'm going to stop with that for now. I want to read a scripture out of Hebrews 10 before I wrap this up. And stick with me through all of Hebrews 10. I'm going to read several verses. But it's very necessary that we hear and receive the word of God. That we receive this now. We have to be really positioning ourselves to not be stiff-necked. It's like a, a plea for the people. And that lady's dream where she's saying, you know, please, please, please. And they're not listening. As they were stiff-necked. Before I read this, I just realized I was going to share my dream about redeeming time. It's like a huge part of what I wanted to share. I don't want to forget it. So let me share it quickly. Um, a week ago, I had a dream. And in the dream, I saw a, a person that I love very much. And I saw his life. And I saw the big picture. And I saw the little pictures. And I saw another, another picture of another person. And I saw their big picture and their little pictures. And there were some attempts of the enemy on this one, that, one of the ones that I love, some attempts of the enemy to destroy his destiny and destroy his life. And I saw the Lord come and he removed those attempts of the enemy, completely removed them as though they never existed. Now, when I woke up and the Lord said to me, I showed it to you as one you love, but this is a corporate message for my people. I am, this is part of redeeming time. You see things that happened and things that are the enemy's trying to bring on your life. They're not going to happen as we submit ourselves to the Lord. The Lord is actually removing them as though they never existed. Even things that had already taken place in our life, the things that we've done, sin and these sort of things, they are removed, completely removed as though they never existed. It'd be like looking at this chair that I'm sitting in right now and the chair never existed. That's what kind of redeeming time we're going to see in this day. I'm excited for it because that means that, you know, a direction we may have been going, things that may have been in our path are no longer there. They're removed, completely removed. Because they're, they're stumbling blocks, you know, that keep us from doing the will of the Lord. Paul Keith gave me this scripture when we were talking about this. And I want to make sure that I share it as well. Let me find it. In Matthew 13, regarding stumbling blocks, it says, The Son of Man will send forth his angels that gather out of his kingdom all stumbling blocks, which means everything offensive, and those who commit lawlessness and will throw them in to the furnace. A fire so here we have again anything that's called it the stumbling blocks all of those things and those who commit lawlessness we're talking about a people that are coming against the things of the Lord 
He's going to deal with them. And in my dream, I saw some of these things being dealt with, literally removed from this person's life, removed from their path, as though they never even existed. And you see, God's not bound by time. He's eternal. He can do whatever he wants with time. That's who he is. He is eternal. And so the fact that I saw these things completely removed as though they never existed, it changed the way I viewed things. It means that things really can be undone. This is a part of recompense, the redeeming of time. It is a part of recompense, and it goes both ways. You see, there's these two sides to this recompense. It's like where the scripture says that his word is a double-edged sword. You know, there's a cut on each side of this thing. And I want to, I'm praying into it more and more about this justice, and I'm trying to position myself to revere him and be humbled before him not just because of his judgment, but because I love him. I want that to be real and true and genuine always. You know, and I want that for the ones that I love. So I'm praying very faithfully. I'm praying very faithfully for my children and for my husband and for my household and for my family members that we stay positioned there with the Lord. It is necessary in this hour to stay there. The recompense is coming. I'm going to read this scripture and then I'm going to wrap this up. Hebrews 10. Therefore, brothers and sisters, since we have confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, open for us through the curtain that is his body. And since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us draw near to God with a sincere heart and with the full assurance that faith brings, having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience and having our bodies washed with pure water. I mentioned it in the last blog that I did regarding this guilty conscience and those sins and those things being thrown into the sea of forgetfulness, being forgotten about as it's mentioned in Nahum. I, th I really encourage you to read Nahum chapter 1. I really encourage you to read it, read all the way through it, see what the Lord is going to do. It's not mentioned in Nahum, is it? It's mentioned in a different scripture. I'll come back to that. But read Nahum too, because that's on my list of things I've been getting. Let me go on. Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds. Remember, I said about Alexander the coppersmith that the Lord will deal with him according to his wicked deeds. So it says here, let's spur one another on toward love and good deeds. So maybe that's what I'm doing here in this blog. Not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another all the more as you see the day approaching. If we deliberately keep on sinning after we have received the knowledge of the truth, no sacrifice for sins is left, but only a fearful expectation of judgment and a raging fire that will consume the enemies of God. I'm not going to go on with the rest of that. I think I'm going to stop there. Go and read Hebrews 10. That's where we are. That's where we are now. But we also are forgiven for our sins as we submit our will and our life to the design of the Most High. So let's do that. Let's do that. This is a plea I have like that woman in the dream. We want to receive the positive things that come from recompense, the redeeming of time, the compassion. We want to be strong and firm and steadfast. He, we want the healing. We want to receive the land to do the good works of the Lord for his kingdom. We want to dream again and continue to dream. And we want to see the time redeemed. I bless you with this message. I'm still unpacking it because it's loaded. I'm going to continue to share on it throughout the coming blogs. You can go to Facebook and you can see that a whole journal entry, Word from the Lord. I believe it's very powerful and necessary now. So I just pray all these things. There's not a lot of time to do a long prayer here, but I pray all these things. And I'm so thankful, let me mention, for all the people that have been messaging with all the confirmations to, you know, the blogs that we're doing. It's so encouraging. It's very encouraging, especially to me, because these are not always easy for me to do. You can ask Paul Key sometimes. I cry a lot right before them because I want to speak the word of the Lord and I want to do it well. 
And so the encouraging words that you send are very helpful for me. So I just bless you today and um, in Jesus' name.